OK, so we're going to look at differentiating the scalar triple product of three vectors. So here are vectors a, b, and c. These are all 3D vectors which depend on some parameter t. We're going to differentiate with respect to t. So now one way of approaching this could just be to evaluate the scalar triple product of a, b, and c. You'd get a big complicated expression and then differentiate that expression with respect to t. The approach that we're going to take here is slightly different. We're going to split this into some smaller steps, which will lead us to a nice answer in the end. So you think about if we were to differentiate the scalar triple product, the first thing you would do in evaluating the scalar triple product is you would do b cross c. So you couldn't do the dot product first and then the cross product of a scalar and a vector. That wouldn't work. So we would actually end up, imagine you've evaluated b cross c, then you would look at the dot product of a with that. So the first thing that we'll actually look at is the derivative of the scalar product of two vectors. So let's just introduce, let's say we've got two generic vectors u and v, and we want to differentiate the dot product of these. So here, u and v, just like our a, b, and c, are going to be 3D vectors which depend on some parameter t. So you've got u1t, u2t, u3t, then the dot product of this with v1t, v2t, v3t. Then we differentiate this. So we're going to have the derivative of if I just omit the dependence on t here, it's going to be u1, v1, plus u2, v2, plus u3, v3, when we take the dot products there. These are all still functions of t. We've got lots of products added together, so we just need to use the product rule for each of these pairs. And then, just for shortness, we'll write this as u1 prime v1, and you also get a u1 v1 prime term from applying the product rule to this first term. Then you also get u2 prime v2 plus u2 v2 prime plus u3 prime v3 plus u3 v3 prime. So now we've got an expression for the derivative of the dot product of two vectors, but we can actually go further than this because let's regroup these and rewrite them in a slightly different order. So first of all, we'll group together all of our u derivative terms. You get u1 prime v1 plus u2 prime v2 plus u3 prime v3. Then our remaining terms, these have all got our v prime terms. So then we get u1 v1 prime plus u2 v2 prime plus u3 v3 prime. So then this is starting to look like actually the scalar product of certain vectors here. So you get u1 prime u2 prime u3 prime, the dot product of this with v1 v2 v3. This corresponds to our first three terms here. Then our remaining three terms are what you would get if you did u1, u2, u3, so just the original vector u, dot product of this with the derivative of your v vector. So now if you differentiate one of these vectors, u or v, with respect to t, you would just differentiate it component-wise. So this is exactly what you would get, actually, if you just differentiated u with respect to t, then did the scalar product of that with v, plus u dot the derivative of v. So now we've got a nice expression for the derivative of the dot product of two vectors. We can apply this to our original problem because now we need to differentiate the dot product of a with b cross c. So we take a as u and v as b cross c using our formula. We then get a prime dot b cross c plus a dot b cross c prime. So the real interesting question now becomes what happens if you differentiate the cross product of two vectors? So just like before, if we introduce two vectors u and v, we'll have a look at what happens if you differentiate their cross product. So we write u and v as u1, u2, u3, v1, v2, v3, all functions of t. We're essentially just looking at differentiating now from the definition of the cross product. You'll get u2, v3, minus u3, v2 as your first entry. Then you get u3, v1, minus u1, v3. And finally, you've got u1, v2, minus u2, v1. So to differentiate a vector like this with respect to t, all we're going to do is differentiate each of the entries. And we'll have to use the product rule six times now. So we'll get a big expression, and then hopefully we'll be able to simplify this. So applying the product rule to our first entry, you get u2 prime v3 plus u2 v3 prime minus u3 prime v2 minus u3 v2 prime. So that's our first entry done. Then for the next one, applying the product rule again, u3 prime v1 plus u3 v1 prime minus u1 prime v3 
minus u1 v3 prime. Then for our final entry, we get u1 prime v2 plus u1 v2 prime minus u2 prime v1 minus u2 v1 prime. So now hopefully there's a way of regrouping this, just like we did earlier. And you'll see immediately, if we look at these three terms here, with your u primes, and we also have these subtracting the u prime terms here, so this is a v1. So if we actually look at what happens when you do this minus this, this looks an awful lot like the definition of the cross product of two vectors. And this is actually just u prime cross with v. So you do the cross product of the derivative of u with v, this is what you'll get, this minus each of these terms. And similarly now if we look at all of the v prime terms, this is again just looking like the cross products definition for, this is now u cross v prime. So this is our expression for the derivative of the cross product of two vectors. And again, it's really nice how similar this looks to the product rule for two real valued functions. So if we now apply this for our original problem, we'll say the scalar triple product is just star here, then this is going to give us, as our final expression, a prime dot b cross c, plus, now we need to do a dot, then in brackets, instead of the derivative of b cross c, we can now write this as b prime cross c plus b cross c prime. Then we we can expand the brackets here as well to get a slightly different expression. So you get a prime dot b cross c plus a dot b prime cross c. Then finally you have a dot b cross c prime. So we get this really nice expression there for the derivative of the scalar triple product. And once again you can notice just how similar this looks to the product rule for three real valued functions. And now we'll finish with a geometric interpretation of this result. So before you differentiate, the geometric interpretation of the scalar triple product of three vectors, we can think of this as being the volume of a parallel pipette formed by your three vectors, or perhaps the negative of this volume if it's negative. So what is the geometric interpretation for its derivative? Why does it look like this? Well, it can help to think of this not in terms of derivatives, but just writing things informally now with infinitesimal changes. So the infinitesimal change in your scalar triple product, your overall infinitesimal change in volume, can be split up into now three different contributions. So you think, what does this actually look like? Your infinitesimal change in a dot b cross c. Well, this would look like, imagine you've taken your vector a, and you've extended it a little bit, this is your infinitesimal change, then this dot b cross c would give you the volume of a small flat parallel pipette on top of this face at the top here. So it seems to be saying that our infinitesimal change in total volume can be split up into, first of all, the contribution change in volume at this top face. Then if we have a look at the scalar triple product A, D, B, and C, imagine B has just changed a small amount as well, then you'll have a contribution change in volume from a small, flat, parallel pipette here as well. And similarly, your change in C will give you a contribution from a parallel pipette just on this face at the back, the one containing the two dotted lines. So just working with the infinitesimals, we can say then that the change in volume overall can be broken up into the change in volume from these three major faces. Now, of course, there will be potentially some change in volume along some of the edges as well, but because we're working with infinitesimals, these will be negligible in comparison with the change in volume you get from the faces. So this is quite a nice way just to wrap this up and think, how do we actually interpret our derivative of the scalar triple product having this nice product rule expression? Well, we can think of this as our overall description of how the volume of our parallel pipette is changing can be broken up into three different terms, each of which capture how the volume is changing at three of our main faces on the parallel pipette.